Hello, Calculus fans. How are we doing this morning? Uh, sort of cloudy out, but the weatherman promises that it's going to get a little bit warmer. Uh, hopefully, the rain is going to go away for a little bit. Um, so we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. I uh, hope all is going well with your family. Hope all is going well for you. Uh, hopefully, you're staying away from any type of sickness. Uh, once again, please continue to work on your social distancing. Um, if we don't pass the virus from people to people, uh, this will go away. Our goal is to get back to as normal as possible as soon as possible. I miss you guys. I wish you were in class right now, um, but it is what it is, um, and we'll continue to work ourselves through this. Um, the University of Finley, uh, you're taking this class to the University of Finley. They are having classes right now in regards to video classes. Um, so uh, we must maintain this. They've been asking me, uh, so we need to continue to maintain uh, going through classes and material. Uh, we only have two more chapters, or we have to finish up this chapter, and then we only have one more chapter to do, which is chapter five. Uh, so we will continue to push ourselves through the material. Um, I tr I'm trying to slow my pace down here a little bit in regards to how we go through things. Um, once again, if you have questions, please, please, send me the questions we'll go through them here in class i give you some homework problems to do from the book uh, please give me questions if you have questions we'll go over through them over them the next day here in class um, hopefully this is going well for you um, i appreciate if you have any comments at all that uh, you know how things are going with respect to the online classes i tried in my other class my trick class uh, to do like a little online survey uh, through Google Classroom, uh, didn't work out too well. Um, I can't, they do them, I can't see what their responses are. So if you can just add comments in regards to how this is going for you, that would be great. So I can get some feedback because we want to make this as easy and as comfortable for you as possible um, to be able to maintain this. Uh, but once again, we still need to continue to maintain going through the material that we have here. Um, I had no any, uh, questions from Newton's method, so hopefully you've worked yourself through the Newton's method. Uh, we'll go back and we'll revisit that in a couple days here um, as we start to review. We have two topics to cover, one today and one tomorrow uh, in regards to derivatives, and that will finish out our chapter for us, which is good, uh, being able to finish out a chapter. Today's idea is we have been dealing with derivatives since all the middle of November, um, yeah, we've been dealing with derivatives a long time. And the nice thing about mathematics is everything is undoable in mathematics. There's rules to do things mathematically and procedures, but there's also procedures to be able to undo it. Okay, so that's what we're going to work on today is undoing the idea of a derivative. Okay, when we talk about undoing a derivative. We have inverse sine, inverse cosine that undo, undoes the sine and the cosine. We have square roots that undo the squares. Well, our antiderivative undoes the derivative. When we do an antiderivative, it undoes the derivative. This is also called an indefinite integral. And for the rest of this chapter, for this class, we'll be dealing with the uh, integrals and working at the process of what integrals will do for us. So we're gonna we're start working with antiderivatives today and which is once again, they're called antiderivative or indefinite integrals. They're sort of synonymous, synonymous with each other. There's your English term for the day. What we have here is we have a function, three x squared plus two x minus five. What I want you to do is write down the derivative to the function. And of course the derivative, we multiply three times the two, x to the two minus one, plus our exponent here, two times one, x to the 1 minus 1, and I know I'm taking it back a few steps here, and this is x to the 0th power, so we have minus 5 times 0, x to the 0 minus 1 power. So if we take a look, the derivative will come down to 6x plus 2. 
and this multiplication by zero makes it go all by five. Now what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to undo this process of just the derivative. So we're going to put the process in reverse what we did to calculate our derivative. Okay, putting the process in the reverse. First of all, it's a symbol that we utilize for an integral. Here's our symbol that we use for an integral. It sort of likes, looks like uh, a stretch Armstrong S. If you take an S and stretch it out, here's our S. If we take it the top and bottom and sort of stretch, we get sort of an elongated S. Okay, that is your value or your symbol for I'm taking the integral. Okay, or the indefinite integral or the antiderivative. I sort of stretch out an S. So when you see this stretched out S here, that is the antiderivative. Well, what we're going to want to do is undo the process of what we just did. Well, what we did here is we took our exponent and multiplied it by our coefficient and then subtracted one from our exponent. So if we take a look at first off, just the variable. We have the value of one to begin with. Okay, this is six x to the first power. Well, what we did to get this one was we subtracted one from two. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add one because that's undoing the process of subtracting one. Now to deal with the coefficient was, well, this exponent that we had up here, this two, we multiplied it by our coefficient of three. So we had two times three. Well, what we have to do to get rid of that multiplication by three is we take our three, our six, and we divide it by the value of two, which is our new exponent up here. So we add one to the exponent and divide our coefficient by the value of the new exponent. Because we had to multiply exponent times our coefficient, subtract one from the exponent, we're putting that process from reverse and reverse, so we're adding one to the exponent and then dividing our coefficient by the new exponent. So if we have x to the zero, two times x to the zero, we add one. So we have zero plus one, and we take our, our new exponent and divide by this new exponent, which is one. So what we get here is we get 3x squared plus 2x to the first, which is part of our original function. The problem we have here is we can't make the constant reappear. Okay, there's no magic that we can have. There's no magic wand that we throw up here. Alibaba, shishkumba, and all of a sudden the value of five or negative five starts to reappear again. We don't have that. So what we do is we just say, okay, we know there's probably a constant there. We don't know what it is, so let's just write plus C, where C is some constant. We don't know what it is. Eventually, in the next section, we will be able to find what that constant is. But for right now, we can't find the constant. So our antiderivative is going to be 3x squared plus 2x plus C which we have the 3x squared plus 2x, and we don't know what this constant is, so we just write a plus c in there. And that's fine. That's fine. We'll be okay with that. Like I said, when we get into differential equations, which is tomorrow's topic, we'll be able to find what that constant is. So we have an exponent rule. Just like when we're dealt with derivatives, and this is 
sort of tough for students at times because they're, they're so, we have dealt with derivatives for so long and the exponent rule for so long. We get stuck in that exponent rule for derivatives and then we go to the antiderivative and we sometimes get confused. When dealing with the exponent rule, the exponent rule for antiderivatives is we take, oops, there should be an A up here. We take x to the n plus 1 power, we add 1 to the exponent, and we take our coefficient that we have out front and divide by the new exponent. So we get the new exponent first, and then we divide our coefficient by the new exponent. Once again, we're putting the process in reverse. Before, what we did, we took the coefficient exponent, multiplied by the coefficient, and then subtract 1. Now we're adding one first and then dividing our coefficient by our new exponent. If we have the deriv antiderivative of a constant, and then don't forget your plus c, because we don't know what is going to be there. If we have the antiderivative of, the, of a constant, well, we had the antiderivative of the constant here. The anti, we had 2, we took the antiderivative of 2, we got 2x. So antiderivative of some constant is going to be the constant times x plus some other constant, d. Let's take a look at a few problems here. We have 12x squared plus 8x minus 5. We want to find the antiderivative. Now, when dealing with the antiderivatives, we have a polynomial here. What I suggest that you do first is you deal with the exponents first. So we have the antiderivative of 12x squared. So we're going to take x squared and add 1 to it. And then take our 12, which is our co coefficient, and divide by our new exponent, which is 2 plus 1 or a value of 3. And now I'm slowing this step down pretty quick, slowly for you. Um, as you get used to this, you'll get a little bit quicker at it. Plus 8, we deal with the exponent first. We add 1 plus 1, add 1 to the exponent, which is 2. And then we have 8 divided by our new exponent, which is 2. Derivative of the constant, we just throw an x in there. Really, we're getting x to the first. We have 0 plus 1 and dividing by 1. So we just have 5x. And then we don't forget, don't forget, plus c. So looking at this, we have 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus the value of c. That's our antiderivative. We have 10 divided by x cubed. Now once again, we need to get it in the form ax to the n. So we have the antiderivative of 10x. Now to move our variable from the bottom up to the top, this turns into a negative 3. Now this dx is your differential. Once again, if you remember, this is what we call a differential. It just tells us which variable we're going to apply our rule to. We're going to apply it to x. Now what students tend to do with this is they'll just do this right here. They'll do plus one. So my new exponent is going to be negative three plus one, which is, that's exactly correct, negative two. And then we're going to take the 10 and divide it by our new exponent. 
And once again, do not forget your plus C. So we have negative 5 x and negative second plus C. And we want to get rid of the negative exponent, so it's going to drop back down to the bottom. So our antiderivative is negative 5 over x squared plus c. Once again, as you start to learn the general derivative rule, the general antiderivative rule is basically the same type of level. Now when we get to our trig functions, We have to ask ourselves, self, what did I take the derivative of to get sine? Well, let's see. The derivative of a sine was cosine. The derivative of cosine was negative sine. What I want to do is take the derivative, antiderivative of sine, which means you have to ask yourself sometimes, what do I take the derivative of to get sine? Well, if I take the derivative of neg or cosine, I got negative sine. So if I multiply both sides by negative one, We have d dx of negative cosine of x is equal to the sine of x. So if I take the antiderivative of sine, I'm going to come down to negative cosine of x plus c. Don't forget your plus c. Just for giggles, the antiderivative of cosine of x dx. Well, what I take the derivative of to get to cosine? Well, the derivative of sine of x was cosine of x. So what we have is we have sort of a flip-flop of our negatives. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. What do we take the derivative of to get secant squared? Hmm. That's a thinker. That's exactly correct. The derivative of secant was secant tangent. The derivative of tangent was secant squared. So this is the tangent of x plus c. Well, what happens if we have square root? Antiderivative of square root. Well, what do we do to put this into an exponent rule? We have the antiderivative of x to the one tooth power. So we're going to take the antiderivative of x to the one tooth power. Okay, so once again, what students tend to do is add one here. So one tooth plus one is going to be x the 3 tooth power, and then we're going to take 1, which is my coefficient here, and divide it by 3 twos. And don't forget your plus C. So if I have 1 divided by 3 twos, this tells me just to reciprocate, so we have 2 thirds. But this, I have to be able to simplify down, which turns into x to the 1 and 1 half power plus c, which is 2 thirds x to the 1 times x to the 1 half plus c. Well, remember how we sort of skated through how to simplify these? So we have 2 thirds x square root of x plus c.
The last one is 1 over x. If I take the antiderivative of 1 over x, well, this is antiderivative of x and negative 1 dx. So I'm going to add 1 up here. So we're left with x to the 0th power. And then I'm going to take my x coefficient and divide by 0. So we get your plus c. But the problem you run into is this is undefined. 1 over 0 gives us undefinedness. So we have issues there. So we have to think back. How else or what other thing did we take the derivative of to get 1 over x? That is correct. The natural log of x plus c. If I take the derivative of a natural log, that gave me 1 over x. So now if I take the antiderivative of 1 over x, I get natural log of x plus c. That is your antiderivative rules. Okay, I posted some homework for you to do also, uh, some book work for you to do. We'll come in and we'll go over a couple other problems tomorrow. If you have questions on any of the, question, on any of the problems, post them. Okay, that is fine. We'll work through them. Um, once again, we need to continue to go forward through the material. Okay, so uh, antiderivatives will be today. We will have differential equations tomorrow. Okay, differential equations, we'll work with them tomorrow. Uh, then that will be the last of the new material. So I'm planning on the rest of this week uh, just reviewing these topics that we've done on, Wednesday, on Thursday and Friday. Uh, Monday, probably next week, will be a review day. Tuesday will probably be a quiz um, over what we're talking about here. Okay, and then later next week, we'll have a chapter test over the entire chapter four. A little bit shorter chapter. It's a little bit better than derivatives in chapter three. Uh, once again, if you have questions, please email them to me. Um, I'll, I'll answer them as best I can. Um, please stay safe. Uh, keep your social distancing from each other. Uh, and, and once again, let's get us back to normal as best as quickly as possible. Um, as I said at the beginning, I miss you guys. I wish we were back in normalcy in classes, but you know, it is what it is. We'll make the best of what we have. Uh, if you have any questions, please email them to me. Um, or if you have any comments, how, how, just tell me. I, I'm, I'm intrigued how this is going for you online learning. Um, I'm intrigued by that uh, because it's, it's something that's new to you, but it's also something that um, you'll probably eventually get to in regards to some college courses that you will take. You'll take some stuff online. Um, so um, it's sort of nice getting yourselves used to it a little bit. Um, hope everybody has a good day. Maybe hit some double D today. Yeah. There you go. It's been open a week. Can you believe that? It's been one week already since the double D's opened up. All right, you folks have a good day. Adios.